Hey guys, so this is going to be sort of a best of beauty products 2013 edition. As I do every single year when December rolls around, when it's time for me to post my favorites video like I do at the end of every month, um, December is a little different because I like to sort of round up sort of a year best of thing. So a lot of these products you've seen before, some maybe not. Uh, but these are just my best of the best top picks from this year and I really had to struggle because this is a lot of products but I could talk about really so many things uh, but I really just try to narrow it down if you know you know that I like something particular and I didn't include it it doesn't mean that it's not good it's just that I really tried to just pick certain things and um, just really make this as condensed as possible but while still kind of hitting every category I do like a you know, I try to do like a skincare thing, a, you know, hair products, blush, eyes, eyeliner. I tried to hit every single category. Um, so this is beauty only, and I'm excited about this. I love talking about things that I love, so this is a good one. I'll just jump right into, um, they're sitting out first. I have no idea what order I'm going to do all this in. Um, we'll talk about some nail products. Now, I'm not a manicure type of girl like I don't go get my nails professionally done I just like to do them myself so I like to use good products that are gonna look really nice because like I said I'm not like a professional nail person or anything um and then obviously last a long time um this Sephora Formula X I'm sure you guys have seen me talk about a million times if you if you watch my videos a lot but the color that I'm digging the most which is odd is this red called Curiosity now I've had this color on my nails, they're not looking perfect by any means right now, but I've had this on my nails for almost a week and they're very still shiny. I could even put another coat of a top coat over it and it'd be fine. Um, but to begin with they look very gel-like. They actually do look pretty shiny considering. Um, and yeah, the ends may have worn just a tad bit. It's been a week like I said, but um, no big chips. So I find that this particular color actually wears better than any of the Formula X colors I've tried. So this is a good one. Of course, lots of fun glitters. This one's called Light My Fire. Check out the glitters by them if you haven't. Really unique. This one is by far my favorite glitter. It's called Meteoric. So pretty over like a gray, um, a light color or a dark color. It's just, this is the perfect, really unique glitter. So this is a good one too. As far as the whole Formula X system, I do have that. I found that it wasn't any better than my, actually I find that my little favorites where these are concerned are better. I'm not a base coat type of girl. Like I always said, I like to just use as little product as possible. I don't like to go through a lot of steps, but I am finding that when I use this, um, I use the C&D base coat. What's it called? Sticky base coat. I do find that my nail color lasts longer. Um, sure, it prevents stains too, so that's great. And then um, my my absolute favorite top coat is the INM Out the Door. I just found this at our local grocery store, um, at Publix. You can I'm sure find these at drug stores or anywhere. They're about three dollars, and it is, in my opinion, better than Sesh Feet because it does not dry out and get goopy. I have to tear that off so I can see how much I have. It doesn't get goopy halfway through. Um, I think the actual effect is better. It looks more like thicker and gel-like and it dries a bit harder. So I can't think of any reason why I wouldn't get this over the sesh feet. Okay, so since that wasn't really makeup, I'll do like things that are non-makeup but still beauty things. Um, and then I'll do all the makeup in a moment. I have two hair care products. Hair care products can be so different depending on people's hair types. So I tried to pick two products that weren't too specific. Um, this Bamboo Plumping Strand Expand by Alternate is a really great... Um, it's, it feels like a lotion, which I like rather than like drying things like mousses or gels, even though I have very fine hair. It's volumizing. It says it creates stronger, thicker, more voluminous hair, and I find that's the case. I've been using this for several years, but on and off. I've been using it a lot the past like six months, just regular, and I have noticed a difference, and I really do like it. Um, the Alterna Volumizing Thickening, or the Hemp Thickening lotion is what I used for years and years and that's been discontinued so I replaced it with this one. So this is sort of the product that I replaced it with and I had been using the bottles of that that I had left over in between times using this but now that all that's gone I've really just been using this and I find that it is almost it's a little more volumizing. It gives me more texture and stuff, which is really important because my hair is so slippery. Um, but I do find that it protects my hair and it feels strong, so good stuff. It doesn't weigh it down or anything. And then, of course, I'm not going to go into this too much, but the Paul Mitchell Hot Off the Press. If you use a curling iron, heating products, you curl your hair, get this stuff. It protects against um, the heat styling and it really holds your style. 
Now, skincare stuff. Um, as far as like lotions and stuff, body lotions, I really didn't have anything super stand out. Um, but a self-tanning product that I am really into, I don't think I'll ever, unless if something just comes along and I try it and I love it, I would never want to search for another sort of tanning product, self-tanning product. Um, I really love the Saint-Tropez bronzing mousse. This bottle I've actually used, it feels like there's not that much left. I think maybe, it's probably to about here if I had to guess. I would say never to buy the darkest one unless if you are very dark skin toned. People that even have very tan skin tones should use the regular. The dark is for like very, very dark skin tones. Um, not just like dark tan skin tones, but like very, very darker skin tones. Um, whether you're very pale like me or you're very tan, the regular one will be what you want. I just think it's easy. It The results are perfect. Um, and then obviously I would suggest using the mint. It's a little weird at first, but it provides the best results. You just have to rinse it after each use. It's just no big deal. I just rinse it and then I do this. I, when I'm done with it, I just put it back on top of the bottle and this is how I store it. And then it dries like that too. Over time, it does stain a little. I can't even tell you how many times I've used this thing. It looks pretty good. Um, they, I mean, I've used this much of the bottle worth of it, so, um, but that's fine. It's just a little stain. It's not going to come off or anything. Um, and then I always use sort of cool water to clean it because I have heard people say that if you use hot water, it can separate right there. And they're very cheap so you can replace it, but I think it's kind of neat that I've stretched mine out and um, haven't had to replace it. It smells like my hand, my hand soap that I use to clean it. Just use a mild soap. Um, but I'm very thankful that my sister-in-law turned me on to that and she works at Ulta so they actually had a Saint-Tropez rep come in and show them how to use that so I'm so thankful that she told me how to do it because I wouldn't have known how to do it and I probably wouldn't have liked it but I do have a video on that. I hate self-tanner. I hate the way it feels and stuff and so I'm just weird about it but that is good stuff. Um, skincare products. My Skin MD Natural Shielding Lotion. I think this is my favorites last year too but it's just the best stuff. If I go a while without using it I can really tell a difference when I start using it again. It's just so so great. You can use it on your hands, on your skin. It's just, it's so nice. It's lightweight. It's like a gel, I would say, like a creamy gel. Um, I use it in the morning and at night, so very, very nice. Although in the morning, I haven't really needed it as much because I have been using the It Cosmetics uh, Your Skin Better CC Cream. This stuff is so great, and I do have a video all about this, but it's the first CC cream that I can truly say works exactly the same coverage as the foundation. Um, and I love all the benefits that it has so that's good stuff my table is such a mess right now everything's like falling off of it um, I did discover a new foundation this year the hourglass immaculate liquid powder foundation it's mattifying oil free that's what it says it's very good for people with breakouts it's got good ingredients in it for that but what I love the most about it is that it does not oxidize. Now, some foundations are very noticeable. They will oxidize on your skin, which means, you know, throughout the day you'll just notice you might look a little bit pink, you might look a little orangey, just depending on what the stuff does. Just with heat and with the air and stuff, most products are gonna do that. Now some, you may not even notice they're doing that, but most foundations do it to some degree. Uh, for example, my uh, Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus, when I put it on my hand to, to apply it, because like, that's how I do it, I just squirt foundation on my hand and then I use it so that I don't put too much on my skin. I can just use what I need. And then I'm always left with this little, and I left it on my hands so you can see, this little patch of, you know, foundation. Because my hands are clean before I do my makeup and I usually don't get anything like on this part of my hands, I don't always remember to like wash that off because my hands feel clean otherwise. Um, so throughout the day I would notice with the Matte Velvet Plus, it would look orange and I'm like, well my face doesn't look like that, you know, or does it? Um, but it doesn't look, it doesn't really show up that much on your face, but you can see that it actually does um, oxidize no matter what foundation I can put on my hands and it will turn just a bit darker throughout the next several hours. This stuff will be actually the same exact color if not like almost lighter sometimes. It's very strange but it does not oxidize at all which is a huge plus for me and one of my biggest like things that I look for with foundation. My Mount Velvet Plus is still wonderful because I, I don't notice the oxidation on my skin but I always do on my hands so I know it does it but that stuff absolutely doesn't so I'm, I'm loving it. All right, so I'm gonna talk about lip products next. First, some lip care products. Um, still, I'm loving this uh, Creme de Rose, the Christian Dior. This stuff is just really nice. Um, this is my second one that I've had, and if you've tried this and you didn't like it, you've gotta know 
something that I didn't know right away when I first had it because I didn't like it for a while when I first tried it years back. There's a waxy layer on top that you really sort of have to break through before it gets good. Um, so apply some pressure with your finger. Don't just like jam into it or anything. But um, get that first harder layer off and then the rest of it is just wonderful. And I love the rosy scent. I have become a lip balm sort of like junkie with this stuff. I find myself not applying like lip gloss and stuff throughout the day. I find myself using this and this would be great to use in the morning and at night too. It's the Liv Livia, the Nivea Kiss of Olive Oil and Lemon. I talked about this in a recent video, but if you can find this stuff, um, I got mine at Ulta. Any drugstore you can find it, I'm sure. Get it. It is the most amazing scented lip product of all time. It just, it has the most amazing scent, and I would say that it doesn't smell like olive oil or lemon. It has the most yummy, like, honeysuckle sweet scent. So, this is 100% recommended, and I would, I just... I don't know. I think when I run out of this Dior, I, there's one that my friend Vanessa, when we went shopping the other day, told me about by Sarah Happ, and it's the um, lip treatment, and she was looking for it. She was like on a mission to find it at Nordstrom, and it was so funny. They didn't have, I mean, it wasn't funny at the time because she really wanted it, but um, she was like on a mission to find that stuff, and they didn't have it, so um, I think they have it online. But anyways, I, I do want to try that stuff. Uh, just because it looked really nice and she like sparked my curiosity about that. But I don't even know if you would need anything like that. Those are a little pricier. This is just so great and not just because of the scent. I can't believe I'm going on and on about lip balm this long, but it makes your lips look and feel amazing. It's great stuff. The product that I'm just loving the most this year and I really want to find some more colors. I own three of these is the Bite Beauty lipsticks. I got the shade Fig earlier in the year. That's what I'm wearing today. Well, I do have a lighter gloss on over it, but I think this is just such a nice universal pink shade without being too pink, but it is um it is pretty and, and girly, you know, and, and pink, but it's not like bubblegummy. And then the Retsina is, pff, I, actually my Retsina looks like it's more used. Um, this is that gorgeous nude that I talked about a while back, and um, it's like a wearable nude. It's not like a dead nude. The Lorac Polished, the 3D Lip Gloss and Polished, is probably my favorite lip gloss discovery of the year. This stuff... I mean, there's so many lip glosses that I absolutely love, but this I really think is neat because it does have sort of that weird, like, opalescent, like, sheen to it where it looks like it's a little bit different, and it has some flecks of sparkle to it as well. Um, but you can put it on over any color, and it just really makes your lips, it does give you, like, a 3D effect. Not that your lips aren't already 3D, but you know what I mean. It just gives them so much dimension, and it works great over nudes, over pinks. Any color I've ever put this on over, it just makes it look better. And then I'm um, a good drugstore lip product pick that I've been using this a ton lately is the CoverGirl Lip Perfection Jumbo Gloss Balm. I only own this one, and this is shade 270, and it doesn't have the name anywhere on it. It's just the number. And I don't have the package, so I don't know. But I really want more of these. These are really great. They're comparable to the Clinique, sort of like the chubbies, you know, the chubby sticks. But um, it's just one of those colors that you can wear. It's this one right here. Is that right? Yeah. Um, you can just wear it with anything. I think it would work with anybody. So shade 270 is a very good one. Although I do want to like explore the rest of them because those are nice. All right, so quickly, I stuff eyeliners this year. The NARS uh, Larger Than Life Longwear Eyeliner, as far as a pencil liner is concerned. They, these are really great. The only thing I, I wish, I wish you could sharpen them. I've decided I don't really like these types of products that you have to roll up or that you have to, I don't, I don't like these sharpeners at the bottom either. I mean, you can never get them as great as you would be able to get one that you sharpen manually. I really, really wish they would do that with these. I just like sharpening a pencil. But the formula of these really makes it worth it for me because I have very oily lids, so a lot of pencils just don't hold up throughout the day, even the um, the Urban Decay 24-7s, which I love those. I love the shade range. I think they look great when you first put them on. Even if I put on a nice primer under them, it, they always separate. So. Um, no matter what colors. These don't, and I, I like that. I like that I can use them on my waterline, and um, I just think these are a good product. I just wish you could sharpen them. 
So I, I really think those are probably my favorite pencil liners. And then the Tarte Multiply Lash Enhancing Liquid Eyeliner. Of course, my um, L'Oreal Carbon Black Liner Intense is still my favorite liquid eyeliner, but I've really gone back to enjoying the pen liners like this. It looks, you would think it's like one of those felt tips, but this is a really tightly packed brush if you separate it. For the longest time, I thought it was a felt tip. Um, but I love this because it's not a felt tip like the MAC Penultimate. I think with that felt tip can get a little pokey. This one is has some give to it because it's a pencil or because it's a brush. Um, and I just think you can get the most perfect um, wing with this. And it gets so super close to your lashes. A new eye primer I've discovered this year is the Lorac Behind the Scenes Eye Primer. I've had two samples of these. Um, one of them is almost gone. The thing is you have to use the tiniest bit that you don't even need to. I think um, that you don't, you wouldn't even go through a lot. This is a sample size that came with my Pro Palette. And then I have one more that came with something else. I think it was my unzipped palette. With my oily lids, I have found that this holds up the best. The NARS, I forgot what it's called, the NARS primer in the white little tube. All these that I'm mentioning are similar like to the Urban Decay Primer Potion. It's sort of like a universal color. It has like that liquidy consistency that you need a tiny bit of. This one's similar to that, so is the NARS. The NARS was very good for oily lids, like much better than the Urban Decay or the Too Faced. This one, I think, is even better than the NARS. So if you've got very oily lids, try the Behind the Scenes Eye Primer. It's been really great for preventing creases for me. Before I get into eyeshadows and palettes, I'm not going to talk much about this. This is the Armani Eyes to Kill. Still my favorite mascara of all time. Of all time? I guess I can say that because it's been my favorite for the past, like, couple years. I don't really remember a lot about the first part of the year. I tried to really look and see, like, what I've been using. Um, eyeshadows, I think I was just using maybe like individual ones. I don't really, nothing stands out to me. But for the second half of the year, a couple really stand out to me. Of course, the Pro Palette by Lorac. I have mentioned this so many times. This is a great palette with any color that you'd need to create a ton of different looks. Um, this is very highly recommended. The Naked 3, obviously, you guys know, came out recently, fairly recently. And um, I did that video about this, and so you guys know I've been really loving this. But um, lately I've been reaching for, I haven't been reaching for this one as much because I've gotten new palettes. It's still great. And the unzipped palette that I mentioned, I just haven't gotten to use it as much. It is very similar to this one. Um, but I might do some looks with that and use it a little more like earlier, or, you know, beginning of the year. Um, so yeah, I, I really think that the Naked 3 is very highly recommended. I'll put my Naked Naked palette posts below so you can check them out. Um, but recently, over the past month, the one that I've been using pretty nonstop is the Sigma Warm Neutrals. The colors are great. There's a couple of really pretty, like, warm taupey shades. Like, I love just two gorgeous, really dark colors that you can do, like, a lot of, like, you can even use, I used this one as liner the other day and it was gorgeous. Really perfect crease color, blending color that's sort of like MAC Soft Brown. Just this is just a really good palette, and everything that I've done with it I've really liked. Um, probably every look that you've seen me wear in a video for the past month or more is using this. So this is a good one, and I've been meaning to do a get ready with me with this, and that may be my next video. So, And finally, blushes and um, a bronzer I'll mention. The Too Faced Sun Bunny Natural Bronzer is just, to me, I think... It is, it's very natural and I've been enjoying it. I love that there's two different colors. I feel like I can use this and not look, I never, ha I never feel self-conscious like I feel like people can tell I'm wearing bronzer or, you know, I, I never feel muddy with this. And then finally for blush, oh and I'll mention one fragrance, I do have one fragrance sitting out. The Rockateur by Benefit, the boxed powder. This is excellent, great stuff. I just always have to smell it. This smells really good. Um, I I love this color. Again, it looks scary. Like I said when I first got it, it has almost looks like it would be frosted. But when it's on your skin, it's just so beautiful. And I actually am finding that products that look like this, um, same with this Too Faced Sun Bunny, which is why I always stayed away from it because it looks heavily frosted. They don't look like that on your skin. They, they look natural. Uh, rather than like the Hoola that has no frost, can look really muddy and fake and powdery. I think products that have a bit of that 
um, I wouldn't say frost because they don't look frosted on your skin. Just a bit of that natural finish, like a sheen, but doesn't look shiny. Hard to explain, but those look, I think, the most natural. And then I've fallen in love with the Chanel blushes. I'm not going to go through all the ones I have, but definitely the most worn one I would say... Okay, that's not it. can never tell them apart because they all look the same. Uh, okay, the one that I need is not here. Here it is. I used it today. Uh, the Malice. This is a color that I think I would recommend to anyone. It's just such a beautiful, like, dark, pinky, corally color. Um, it's just beautiful. I love it. The Chanel Chance is probably my most worn fragrance of the year. I love my Gucci too. That's still my, probably one of my all-time favorites. And I say that because now I think I'm sort of going more toward the Chanel Chance as being like my everyday scent. Um, but yeah, good stuff. So that's it. I know this is a long video, but um, to sum up all of the favorites and stuff, and, and granted I didn't go through brushes, I didn't hit every single little section there is of makeup stuff because I really just wanted to pick the things that stood out to me. And then from there I sort of brought them down into like little sections. So, um, so yeah, I hope that was helpful and that you guys enjoyed it. Happy New Year to all of you. Thank you so much for watching another year and for enjoying the videos and um, all the great comments and all the great feedback, all of just the great interaction that we have with each other. This is just the happiest place and it's just so much fun. I say this all the time, but you know, YouTube and my blog and from Twitter to Instagram, anything where we communicate is just such a positive place. And that's how I've always seen it. And, you know, I have had some people say to me, like, how do you deal with criticism and so much bad stuff? But really, to me, there's like hardly any bad stuff at all because there's no other place where you could have this many, like, thousands of women. Like, I've, I've always said this since the beginning building each other up, leaving nice comments like, oh, you look pretty, or oh, I like that, or I like that. I just think it just, you know, where you can take, like, a couple of comments compared to the big picture and say, wow, like, what has humanity come to? Like, really, you look at the big picture and think that it really makes me, like, proud of humanity. Like, I don't know, I just feel like it's such a positive place, and it's something really fun to do. So here's to a great new year in 2014, and I will talk to you all very, very soon. Bye.